Yeah, we're really gonna make this a thing. It's time to roll out our first Swouter. So by the time we're done here, we will apply a multi-layer switch configuration to a router ether switch module to provide routing for Arizona. <laughs> what? <laughs> so here's, here's I, when I said the first official swouter, I really meant it because a lot of times when I talk about multi-layer switches, which is a switch, wait, a matter of fact, matter of fact, these guys right here, these are all multi-layer switches. They are switches that have routing capabilities, right? And that's, that's great. We call those multi-layer switches, but what I'm talking about right now is actually this module inside of our router that is known as an ether switch module. See, when we were originally getting the VLAN set up, we went to Nevada and set up the router as a router on a stick. Well, technically, first we deployed the VLANs, 10, 20, 30, 40. We did a full-on VLAN deployment there. Then we created sub-interfaces on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 to route for each one of those VLANs, right? And we, we got that going. And behind the scenes, I got that configured on our Florida router as well. Same VLAN deployment using subnets from this site prefix, pretty fantastic. But I said, we're gonna come back to Arizona and do it later. Now's that time. So taking a look at Arizona, there's two ways that we could approach it. One is kind of a little more enterprisey. That is, we could take these, these layer three switches and we could set them up literally as layer three switches, setting up VLAN interfaces, setting up um, even uh, things like FHRPs, that's first hop redundancy protocols like HSRP, uh, VRRP, and there will be some of that in the CCNA course material that's that's there. But right now, what I'm looking at is I'm going, okay, well, I'm looking at that HQ router with an ether switch module inside of it. And I'm thinking that the best thing that we could do to get us running is actually apply a multi-layer switch configuration to that ether switch module and set routing up the right way. So first thing I want you to know, the configuration you're about to see is literally the exact same configuration if you do it on the router with the switch inside of it, or if you do it on the multi-layer switch, like you do it on one of the 3750s or 3550s. I mean, literally, you could copy and paste the commands in there, and it it would it, it wouldn't it would apply. It would work just the same based on whatever device you want to be on. The second thing I want to tell you is that this is a little different than doing a router on a stick. Now, it's kind of the same function, meaning you have a router here that kind of receives routes coming in and, and, and or, or I should say receives traffic from VLANs coming in and then can route them out other VLANs going out. Same thing as that router on a stick, but the way the configuration is applied is in a switch sense. That's because this literally puts a switch, this module right here, literally puts a switch inside of your router, a little four port switch. They actually make eight port, 16 port ether switches, depending on which type of router that you have. So um, we're gonna get that set up. Now, the difference between the two is we won't go in and create those sub interfaces. We'll actually create VLAN interfaces. Now, I want you to grab a piece of paper if you don't have one. These are technically known as S. VIs. That stands for Switch Virtual Interfaces. Now, it's going to be a little bit confusing when I do this, but as I walk through it, it's going to, it's going to make a ton of sense. There are two kinds of commands you can type on a router or on a multi-layer switch. Uh, I should say a router with a switch module inside or a multi-layer switch. The first is VLAN X, and that is actually a command we've typed time and time again in creating VLANs. That literally creates the shell of the VLAN. So if I type in VLAN 10 and hit the enter key, I just created VLAN 10. VLAN 20, hit the enter key, I created VLAN 20. If I type in interface VLAN X on the other hand, I create a layer three switch virtual interface for that VLAN. So, for example, we went over here and we created fast ethernet zero slash one dot 10. And I assigned an IP address to that interface where it could do the routing. I could do this on either a layer three switch, multi-layer switch, or a router with a switch module inside by typing in interface VLAN 10, 
poof, a new switch virtual interface is uh, created, and I give it the IP address, and that can then be the routing for the VLAN. This is something you got to see for yourself. Watch. Let's let's uh, let's go. I've already moved my console cable over to uh, the HQ router, so let's bring that up. I've got AZ RTO one con zero is available. We'll get logged in. First thing I'm going to do is do a uh, show IP interface brief. Cool. Okay, this has got old configuration on it. We've got first off an internet address because remember gigabit zero slash zero is connected to the internet, not pictured here. As a matter of fact, let me let me shift slides, which goes straight to an Arizona-focused uh, uh, image, which is what we're doing. This is our internet connection, and sure enough, when we look at the router, we see that that interface has a public internet address assigned to it. Now down here, we have the VLAN 1 interface, which until now, I mean, we haven't touched this interface since we initially rolled this network out. It has been using the temporary address, 192.168.1.1. Well, you know what? We're done with that. We're going to go in and remove that IP address. No IP address, 192.168.1.1. Actually, we, we could have just done this much simpler. <laughs> it's going to say, hey, incomplete. You either got to type the whole thing, you got to go all in, or just do the shortcut, but don't, don't give me half a command. You got to put that subnet mask after it, right? So now I should have no IP address internally on this router. By the way, I hope I have an outage window prepared for Arizona because I just took that network down, right? Whoop. Hang on, let me get back here. Um, so now I need to go in and set up a SVI interface for every single one of those VLANs. Watch this. VLAN 1, 10.16.0.0. I'll come back over here to our router, global config. And for, well, first off, let me type in VLAN 10. I'm creating VLAN 10. VLAN 20, creating VLAN 20. VLAN 30. I'm just going one by one, creating these VLANs. VLAN 40, and they are created. Now, I'm going to come back here and do a show VLAN, which on a switch with a ether switch module, it's like, well, I'm, I'm kind of divided. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a switch. I'm kind of a router. So the command is a little bit different than it is on a switch. Notice I've got show VLAN switch. Now, I didn't take the time to name these VLANs like static or servers and voice over IP like we had on, on the other ones, but they'll work just fine because they're identified by number. By the way, don't forget, when we're doing this, just like the router on the stick, this interface should be a what? Remember? Trunk. We need to make sure that we configure this interface on AZ Switch 01 as a trunk port to send all the VLAN traffic with tags over to the HQ router. That's what allows it to receive all that traffic and do the routing for it. Okay, good. So let's go back to that router. I've got the, the four, four VLANs created. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do interface VLAN 10. Big difference. VLAN 10 right here created the VLAN. Interface VLAN 10 created a switch virtual interface or a layer three interface that allows it to route for that VLAN. Exactly like the router on a stick. Exactly like the sub interfaces, it's just we're doing it using a switch method. So I'm gonna type in IP address 10.16.0.0 uh, oh, hang on, 0 0.1, 255.255.255.0. It'll give me an error message. I've used that zero because this is going to be the default gateway for all of the clients that are sitting on VLAN 10, right? I put a client right here, VLAN 10. It's got uh, the IP address 10.16.0. Let's just say 50, right? Default gateway will be 10.16.0.1, which will come up through here and reach that VLAN 10 SVI. Then it can route it out to the internet, across the metro, wherever that packet is destined, it can take care of that. Okay, let's do VLAN 20. Bring that back up, exit out, interface VLAN 20. Hit the up arrow and we will go 16.2.1. Good. Interface VLAN 30. And you notice every single time I create one of these, it's like, oh, hey, we just... Change this interface, you know, status to blah, and we, we've, we've got that. Now, it's saying down right now because we haven't set all the VLAN. It, I'll explain that in just a second. We haven't set up our trunk yet, right? VLAN 30, this is going to be 10.16.4.0 slash 23. So we'll do 4.1, first IP address, but a little broader subnet mask because we got a little VLSM going on. So we'll do IP address 10.16.4.1, 255, 255, 255. 
4.0 is a slash 23. And I'll hit the up arrow, do VLAN 40, and I'll go 6.1. Now watch this. I'm exiting out, show IP interface brief, Shazam. I've got all these VLAN interfaces right here that can now do the routing for each one of those VLANs. Now, why are they all down? Well, the reason why is we've created the VLANs. If I do a show VLAN, again, on this router, it's the same command as, as a switch, just show VLAN dash switch, shows all these, but, but notice there's no ports in them. So what it's saying is, I'm extraordinarily sad. I've got this interface that can do some routing, but I've got nothing that's a member of VLAN 10. VLAN 10 is there, it's just nothing, nothing's there. Why? Because we have yet to go in and set up this interface as a trunk. Watch what happens when we do. I'm gonna go in, hit that router, global config mode. Well, let's just do a uh, show IP interface brief, once again to highlight. We are going into this interface. This is the one that's connected into our core switch. So global config mode, interface fast ethernet zero slash zero slash zero, do switch port mode, right there, trunk. It now has the trunk configuration. Notice it comes up and says, okay, we're now taking VLAN one down because nothing else is a member of that. But that trunk port should be a member of all the other VLAN. So I'm going to do a show interface trunk and hit the enter key. Sure enough, it says this is now a trunk. It's using 802.1Q. It is trunking. The VLANs allowed is all of these. We're, I haven't restricted what VLANs are there. And the ones that are active are these. So if I do a show IP interface brief now, <laughs> it, I was like, I was, I was kind of delaying because I was like, it's going to take some time. And it, literally, as I hit the enter key on that command, it's like, oh, by the way, they're all up. It's, it was like, you know, uh, you know, mom comes in the last second. Oh, the room is clean. Ah, we're all done. So we've got all of those uh, configured. They're all up because they're all now a member of that trunk. Are we done? New way. We got to make sure that we go to the other side of that connection, this side right here, and configure that as a trunk as well. Otherwise, it won't pass all the way through. Console cable switch, coming down here, plugging into that switch. And just for the record, we are going fast ethernet two slash zero slash one. Hit the enter key a couple times. There we go. So we'll do a show interface trunk because we already have trunks on this guy going all over the place. Uh, two slash zero slash two, yep, we, we've got that going. A port channel, that's an ether channel. That's, that's from another skill. Um, so we'll, we'll go into global config mode interface fast ethernet two slash zero slash one and we will do switch port actually trunk encapsulation dot one q got to do that first on older switch switch port mode trunk bam we've now got that trunk configured so at this point there we go interface has changed to up we should have all the vlans routing straight across from our switch right here to this router, which is configured as a swouter. <laughs> that is a switch module inserted and a router otherwise, but using the SVI interface configuration. I want to emphasize again, the configuration you just saw is the same exact configuration you would paste into these guys if you would rather use those as multi-layer switches. All right, come on, we, we've got to test this thing. We can't just walk away feeling good about ourselves without testing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my computer right here and plug it into, matter of fact, I, I, I did. <laughs> you can see this interface right here. This is what runs to my computer. It's plugged into Fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 on the access switch. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 23. What I'd like to do is I'd like to make that guy a member of, let's, let's just use two different VLANs. Let's use VLAN 10, because that's kind of our static. I'd say, let's put him in there and test. And what I want to do is assign him an IP address from that VLAN and make sure he can ping through all of the trunks that we've got configured and hit our router right there, right? It'll, and that'll obviously serve us well when we configure NAT and get him to go out the internet. This tests the internal path of connectivity. Then we'll move him to a different VLAN. So we'll start on VLAN 10. Then we'll move him down to VLAN, let's go 30, right? VLAN 30. Give an IP address from that VLAN and make sure he can reach the router on that one. Sound good? Okay. So first and foremost, let's move our console cable over to switch three. 
Connection moves. Snap. Come back here. Press the enter key a couple times. Log in. Show VLAN. We should have all the VLANs created. Yep, there they are. And let's go to, uh, let's do a show IP interface brief. I just like seeing that fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 is indeed up because my computer's plugged in. We'll do uh, show interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 23 switch port. You can see that this guy's set up for dynamic desirable, meaning it'll flip flop between access and trunk. But right now it's an access port because there's nothing trying to negotiate using DTP. This is horrible security. We'll change that. But right now it's in VLAN number one. So we'll go in and go to interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 23, switch port mode access, get that dynamic desirable out of there. Switch port access VLAN 10. Boop. We've made the switch. Now, because we completely changed the switch fabric, spanning tree is waiting to negotiate that port. You can see it's amber right there. We'll wait a couple seconds. Bam, there we go, we're back. Now, before I just go in and change the IP address and, and make sure it works, I, I wanna show you that now, we, we have the same IP address, but we're on a different VLAN. So if I try and ping 10.16.0.1 now, it shouldn't work because we're in a totally different subnet. So it's like, not gonna happen. So we'll bring our control panel back up, Dell Docnik, and we will say our IP address is now, what was that? 10.16.4.0/23. So let's go crazy. Let's just expand that subnet a little bit, right? We'll, we'll go into the 5.50, which should be in the same subnet, right? Because we are all subnetting ninjas by this point, And we know that we will, uh, we'll, we'll go to, we'll still be able to reach the 4.1 because it's within our range. If we did a little reverse subnet masking there, right? Click OK and, and we'll do IP config. Yeah, <laughs> a little too fast. There we go. IP config, it's, it was like in the, it's like, help me, I'm still applying it. Um, so now it's all applied. We've got 10, 15, 550. So I should be able to ping 10.16.4.1 and bam, we are good. We are now able to communicate on VLAN 30, which verifies, I mean, it verifies a ton of stuff. It verifies that the VLANs are working on this switch. They're created. We've got an active trunk going up here to this switch. We've got an active trunk going up here to the, to the swouter, and we've got SVIs that are working right here on that, that router. That sets us up for full-on internal routing so we can get ready to deploy NAT and roll out internet access. We have applied a multi-layer switch configuration to a router ether switch module, thus providing routing for Arizona. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.